Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Yes, this is another car video. Very excited to film this one. Um, we're doing a spec video, so what I went for on the car, um, colours and stuff and all the options inside, I'm going to go over this in this video. Um, but yeah, very excited to come to this awesome area. Um, it's close to me, but we've been actually driving around for about an hour and a half trying to find somewhere to film. But this was literally around the corner. Um, and I forgot. This is the car. Um, I collected it on the 1st of September, as some of you guys, guys may know. Um, that video's done very well, so I'm going to keep doing these videos. Um, and I really like doing them, so that's awesome you guys like it. Right. <coughs> going to be a bit busy here because, yeah, it's a Sunday, so all the bikers are out. If you just pan over there to the road, you can see what actually is a nice I used to come down here and bomb my RS3 down here. I really miss those days. But anyway, it's four by it's four by four vibe at the moment. Um, yeah. First of all, I think it's just like a group of them. Yeah, a load of Harley Davidsons. Hopefully, it's not going to be all through this video. Um, yeah, but yeah, let's um, first, let's be real shit out of this. Okay, awesome, right. Let's start with the actual model of the car. So, it's a Range Rover Velar. Um, it's a, an SE R Dynamic D240. So what that means is, you get the R Dynamic pack on it, and you can get that in S, SE, and HSE. Um, and then you get the, the standard Velar, which comes in S, SE, and HSE. So, there's kind of different things. So I went for the R Dynamic pack, the SE, and the diesel engine, which is the D240, so it's 236, 240 brake. Um, two litre diesel engine, obviously, and it's got the add blue tank as well, um, which makes the diesel a little bit cleaner. Um, I didn't go for the D300, which is slightly faster, but it's, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Um, it's better fuel economy in this anyway. The only thing, when you go up to the three litre engines, the D300, you do get the air suspension. So on this one, I haven't got that, but I'd rather spec other things than and the air suspension didn't really make sense to me. Um, I'd rather like, like the look of the car more aesthetically than kind of techy underneath the bonnet and stuff. I always like to spec my cars. I've always spec my cars from factory. That's what I like doing. Um, so they are mine, and I've designed them myself. So yeah, D240 SE Velar R Dynamic. So let me talk you through the R Dynamic. So on the R Dynamic, you get kind of a different roof spoiler, and it's got a little um, it's got a little holes at the top. Don't worry, when I'm going around this, I'll show you at the clips so you can see it better. Um, what else is on R Dynamic? You get. So, also on R Dynamic, you get this strip here. 
this strip and with the r you get copper accents as well so you get copper here you get copper here and you also get copper it's not actually copper it's just copper color accents on the front here which i really really like um, and as you come around the front this is where the part you can tell which is um which is actually the r dynamic so the the bottom front splitter is different you get fins coming out here there's a little bee there hello <laughs> it's dead yeah you get this seal across here you get a different grill at the bottom again here with the fins coming out and these bits here um other things on r dynamic you get is the black plates the again the copper accents and it says range over there also on dynamic Brilliant, lovely. It is all personal preference, but it's like kind of when you do Audi, you have non S line and S line, BMW and M Sport, not M Sport. Mercedes got AMG line and all that stuff. It's kind of the same here with R Dynamic and without R Dynamic. Me personally, I would always go for R Dynamic. I think it just look, makes it look more aggressive and the way how I expect it goes nicer with the wheels I've chosen and all that kind of stuff. Um, the, the normal one without R Dynamic looks, just really looks really basic um, and doesn't really stand out that, as much as. You know, the nice grill and the spoiler at the back. So, other thing you're probably wondering is the colour. Um, it is a metallic paint. I don't know how many layers it is, but it, it is quite expensive to spec metallic paints on Land Rovers. Um, it's more than kind of Audis and BMWs. So, it's in the silver, it's the colour, it's really nice. Silver in the sun, it just pops so nicely. I've never had a silver car before. And you think silver cars like old and like kind of out of fashion out of day, but now I think they're, they're definitely coming back in with if you choose silvers like this with nice spec and fleck in it. Um, yeah, so that's the colour, into silver and Range Rover tradition with like the Sport, the, the Vogue and stuff. Always go with the black roof on the Range Rover. Um, I just love the two-tone, so you get black wing mirrors. The whole roof is black down to the door, kind of frame here. Yeah, I really like the idea of the two-tone on Range Rover, it's just so iconic. But yeah, I was going to spec the whole car black, like black it out completely. Um, or have it white as well, but I, in the end I, I changed my mind because I just love the two-tone and what Range Rover do with it. So that's that. So in the silver, got the black, also there's a pan roof on there as well. Mirrors fold, all that jazz. So yeah, with the wheels, I think these are kind of the major kind of best bit of the car. They're 22 inch diamond turned alloys. So with the two-tone, you've got the nice grey bit in here with the kind of aluminium look, alloy look on the outside. You can get the um, pure silver, but I just like this with the with the dark grey and the alloy here. It goes with the rest of the car, especially the, the inner silver and then the black roof. It all ties in really nicely. I always have to stop right there. 265 by 40 R22. Absolute ridiculous size. Yeah, <laughs> these wheels. Um, so, Land Rover fans, you may know this. Um, when this released, the Blur release, they did a first edition, so that's full-blown HSE, um, these wheels, it's got every single uh, optional extra on it. Um, that car was about 85, 88 grand, um, and they came with these wheels standard. So, I haven't seen too, too many Blurs with these wheels specs. Um, one or two, I've drove past with these wheels, but yeah, if you spec these wheels, then it kind of looks like you've got a first edition. But obviously, it's, this is not a first edition, it's just I've spec the wheels on it. Um, these are a £2,000 option, so they are pretty pricey wheels, but I thought that over the air suspension, which is about the same price, um, I would prefer the wheels to that. So yeah, those are the wheels. And also, I must not forget, my good friend Henry Simons, he was the one that kind of changed my decision on these wheels, because way back when I ordered the car, I had the 20-inch satin grey, I think they're still 9-spoke, yeah, 9-spoke satin grey wheels, um, which came standard on the SC, you can get them standard. Um, and I was just going to go with them, but I, I obviously knew these wheels were on the, the spec list as well. Um, it's just kind of, I don't know why I, I didn't go for them, but he kept on saying, go for the wheels, go for the wheels, go for the wheels. So I've got to thank him. Thank you very much for, for making the decision or changing my mind to go for these wheels in, in, you know, in the end. But the funny thing is we went into the showroom. I, I mentioned this in the collection video. We, we went into the showroom the day before you could I mean the day before the spec locked, so we went on the 4th of July, the spec locked on the 5th, so it was so crazy that I was able to get in there and change the, the spec on the wheels before the actual spec locked, I had no idea whatsoever, so it's a big coincidence there, um, so yes, thanks very much Henry, thanks for both Simons. Also I want to mention, 
another thing about the outside, the exterior. All the, um, so I've seen quite a few Indusilver cars, Indusilver spec cars, um, and all of them have the black back. So what the black back means is, still they are dynamic, they black this out, the copper accents here, and they black this top out and obviously the side bit there. Um, I didn't want to do that, I wanted to make it different because I, the reason why I spec the R dynamic is because of these copper bits here. Um, and I really like that, so I didn't want to lose them, so I kept those on there. Um, I didn't want to go black back. I know probably everyone's going to say, oh, why you go for the black back? Um, so that's the reason why I kept those on there. I think it just, it, it doesn't look bad with those. Um, it gives it that extra flair and pizzazz. On the SC you get the Pixel ID headlights. They're a bit like the Matrix headlights you get on Audi. Um, with these, they, they actually work really, really well. So when a car's coming towards you and you've got your full beam on, it actually, where the car's coming, it blocks out a section of your, of your headlights. So little squares duck down and it makes like a, a tunnel for the car to go through. Um, it works pretty well. E well, there's only been a couple of times when I've been behind someone and it's, their, their lights are really, really dim and shitty. So sometimes it's doesn't detect it when there's lights in front of you but that's only when the, the lights of the car in front of you are really like dim and stuff or like an old banger but yeah it works really good some people do flash me when I'm coming towards them I think it's because Land Rover's got really really bright lights um, they used to flash me in the Audi as well but yeah they work really good oh yeah you got the door so so it's the new thing that um, Land Rover and Range Rover are doing the doors fold in and they're flush to the body, which I think is quite cool. Obviously, it's you've got the comfort access or whatever it's called. You don't have to press the button just when you're near it. You can open the doors. Um, if you come around the corner, it works the same with the boots. If you wiggle your leg under here gracefully, the boots will hopefully open. There we go. There it is. It works on both sides. It's like a sensor down here. Sometimes you miss it. Sometimes you get it. Um, but yeah, that's how the boot opens then, if you want to close it. Yes, first time, there we go. Right, so I think that covers the exterior of the car. I hope this is not too boring. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to get one of these cars, I just want to kind of cover the whole thing um, and go through it, really. Okay, right, let's start with the interior then. So this is the back. Um, as you see, this is the... I haven't configured the interior as in like executive seats or anything like that it just comes like this these are the SE seats um, you can get uh, the HSE seats which are full leather but I kind of like the Alcantara here like this velvet kind of look and the perforated leather um, so that's why I went for I didn't want to go for the HSE because the whole seat is kind of leather and I like these contrast accents it also goes with the back roof and the wheels as well um, so yeah it's, it's a nice kind of contrast inside here so what it is it's the ebony and oyster seats um, part of it's leatherette, part of it's leather, I'm not sure. Um, it might all be leather actually. Um, but yeah, this is kind of Alcantara veneer stuff. Kept the tag on it. <laughs> there it is. Um, yeah, my mates challenged me to keep that tag on until I sell it. So yeah, there we go. <laughs> so yeah, electric pan roof, um, opens fully. Then you've got the sun blind as well, which is quite cool. Every time you turn on the car, it opens for you. And when you lock the car, it closes. So that's pretty nice. Into the front. Also when you're at SE level, this, um, you maintain the little patterns in here, which is really nice. It's like little diamond patterns. So you get that here, also through to here, on there and out through there. So when you do HSE, this all goes to leather and this goes to leather. You don't get any patterns. You get one line of stitching going through here, I think. But this is why the reason I kept the SC version, because I like these little diamond patterns. If you have HSE, you then can't spec back to this. So I kept it SE. Also, when you, when you spec the SE, it's got the upgraded Meridian sound system. Um, which is quite cool. Nice silver speaker down here, and you've got a little tweeter up here, which is there. Um, also, if you look at this in a different way, it kind of has the, well, not kind of, it does have the um, Union Jack in there, um, the flag. So, yeah. And also, this, I spec this, um, which is the satin charcoal ash veneer. Um, standard is just a brush aluminium one, but I wanted to spec the black and the kind of exposed wood because it goes again with the with the black roof um, and the two-tone wheels as well. Uh, also you get this tread plate seal thing, it says R-Dynamic. Um, it doesn't light up I don't think. Um, 
um, but I do get the I do get the uh, puddle lights under the wing mirrors. It displays like a circle with a little picture of a um, silhouette of a Velar, so which is quite cool. Let's go around to the passenger, uh, the driver's seat. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I hope, I hope I'm not boring you. Right, so basically the same. I've got. So this is all SE. I haven't really spec'd anything apart from the the satin ash stuff. Uh, and that's it. I mean, if you spec SC, it comes with um, electric seats. It comes with memory one, two, three on the driver's side, uh, folding door mirrors and all that stuff. So that's you, you're covered there if you spec the SE version. Um, and, and again, with, with the HSC, you don't get too much else. You, you only get the leather, which is on here, and you get, you get memory passenger as well. But I think that's it. Um, you may, this is, I think this is 10 way. On the HSC, it might be 16. You can change it a little bit more with the seats, more kind of variance in the seat. But I mean, you don't really need it. It goes forward, no, it's not on the Netflix, forward, back, up and down. This also comes out um, and all your stuff with that. Heated seats, standard, all that stuff. Um, so the other things I spec with the interior is the config configurable ambient lighting. So you can change all the colors. So I think there's about 10 colors you can change. Red, blue, orange, and all that stuff. Comes with the three screens you know they're doing with Range Rover the new stuff um, it's out on all models now the the Velar, the Sport and the Vogue actually yet to come is the Evogue which is coming out later this year or something which will have the three screens so you've got a screen in here a bit like the Audi virtual cockpit screen in the middle and then you've got another screen there and you've got your gear, gear knob thing there which is quite cool it pops up when you turn on the car um, but yeah I think that's about it. The only thing to expect inside was it with the satin ash and the configurable lighting, I think. Oh, obviously, and the pan roof, which out to spec as well. Um, yeah, so really. Adaptive dynamics? Yes, adaptive dynamics. Thank you. So, yeah, with adaptive dynamics, that was a thing because this is a 90 model year Velar. Um, and if I didn't spec the adaptive dynamics, I, ha I would have to wait until kind of November time, which is next month, um, or even next year, actually. So, it makes the car kind of more stable through the corners um, when you're going at high speed and stuff um, it kind of firms up the chassis when you put it in dynamic mode um, and sport mode so it is pretty good with this car so I've driven the the Vogue the big guy um, and that's that has a lot a lot of body roll this one you, you wouldn't expect like it to drive like this it actually drives like a little sports car it's, it's insane um, and I drove a what was it, a Maserati Levante a year back or so. It's kind of similar to that actually, um, as in kind of how it drives and stuff. And it sticks to the road, not too much body roll. It's really good actually how it drives. And that's even without the um, air suspension. With the air suspension, it would probably be even better. Um, but yeah, that's why I spent the act I can't even say it. Adaptive Dynamics. Um, it wasn't a costly option. It's just an option where I can get the car earlier. says in the brochure right cool I've done 3,000 miles already in <laughs> a month and a half <laughs> um, but yeah it's, it's good it's going well the, the fuel economy is I was expecting a little bit better actually but um, it's 10 times better than the the Audi RS3 that I had it's only because I've been driving a little A1 before this um, I mean that it was only like 40 quid to fill up um, and you get 400 miles out of it. I'm getting about 380, 390 out of this and the tank's like 60, 69, 69, 69 quid. So it's not too bad. It, like, it lasts me for about a week. Um, I'm okay with that. Um, as you know, I do a lot of miles. So it's a good, it's actually a pretty like, if you want to have a daily car, this, I mean, if you like 4x4s, Range Rover's spot on. Um, a little bit sporty, obviously you go for like a Porsche Macan or something, but yeah, I'm really enjoying it. <gasps> right, so this video is going to be probably 21 minutes long. But yeah, I just want to give you a little insight on, on the car and stuff. I mean, I like making these videos on cars. I'm, you know, I'm really into it um, with my cars and stuff. So yeah, and I had a few comments on my collection video that they wanted a spec stuff, a spec video for me to do. So yeah, I think that covers the car. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else. I could mention the plate actually. You might have seen my, in my collection video, I collected it without the plate and it looks so good without the plate on the front. This is just the, the normal register for September, the 68 plate. I have um, my own private plate if you guys 
remember from the RS3 videos, I will be putting that back on. It's annoying. So yeah, I am thinking about putting my plate on, um, on the car. But, and, and again, I, th um, I don't know, it's WAFST, um, if you guys know, if you've seen them in my other videos. I don't know, I'm thinking about getting another one. Um, I think it just says, like, on my RS3, people used to joke about it and say, oh, he's just put a plate which is fast on it, because my initials are FST. Um, yeah, so, not really sure about the plate idea. But yeah, I thought I'd just add that in for the end of the video. But yes, guys, that's pretty much it for the, the spec video. As I said, if you've got any questions, put them down in the comments. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Uh, and if you want any other car content with this, I don't know what I could do with it now. Um, some road trips and stuff, um, some photo shoots with it and stuff, anything, drop them down in the comments. Alright guys, hope you enjoy it and I'll see you next one. Goodbye.